Hello everyone. In this uh, video I'm going to demonstrate how to use some of the 3D graphing capabilities of GeoGebra. Uh, you'll see here that I've entered a function uh, y equals 3 times x to the power 5 which is displayed here nicely. Now I want to uh, make a volume of revolution for this object and I only want to go say from x equals 1 to x equals 4. So first I need to uh, draw this thing uh, just with the, the domain here from x equals 1 to 4. So now that I've got the entire thing drawn, I'll do this by the function command. Now the function command requires a, a function, so I could either use f or y, I'll just say f, and then I can put the value 1 and the value 4, and you'll start to see this is highlighted in a different colour. That's my new function that I've, um, looks like it's correct. So I'll enter there. So this function labeled g of x is based on the original one. I don't really want to see the original one anymore. So I'll just uh, turn the viewing part off for that. I can't delete that or I'll lose the reference in here. So I don't, I want that to sit there in the memory. And this is the thing that I want to do a volume of revolution. Now, the, uh, the calculation is something that you just have to figure out yourself. I'm talking here about the display of this object. Uh, in order to see this, I need a 3D view. So I'll go to the main menu up here, and on the view menu, I'm going to tick 3D graphics. There it is. And I really don't want to see the 2D view, so I'll take that away, and then I'll just close that menu. So this is my 3D graphics view. The red axis is the x-axis, green is the y-axis. That's the function g of x that we were just looking at. And if you like that grey uh, surface, that grey horizontal surface, that's the xy plane that we were looking at in the 2D view. The new blue axis is the z-axis. Now, manipulating and moving this around is a little different. We have the familiar move graphics view command, so I'll choose that one to start with. And as you can see, I get this little double headed arrow, so I can more or less grab the XY plane and move that where I like. Again, if I hover near the axis, I can stretch the axis, just like I used to. Uh, likewise with the Z axis, or with the, the Y axis. There's a new command here as well, rotate. And if I select this one, I can spin the thing around. It's a little bit easy to get lost in this view. If I pop it like that, so I'm looking directly at the XY plane, that's more or less the graphics, the 2D graphics view that we were used to. The Z axis looks like a point now because it's pointing straight at us. There's X and there's Y. But of course the whole idea of a 3D graphics view is to have it in 3D. Now, in order to uh, make this thing a volume or a surface of revolution, I'm going to use a parameter n. We've seen this before, how we can create a slider. And this parameter is going to be the angle through which it rotates. So I'll start from 0, and I'll go to 2 pi, remembering angles are in radians for GeoGebra. And I'll go in steps of, say, pi over 12. So it's a reasonably nice. Uh, now, the command we want is surface. As you can see, we're getting some expression, uh, some, some possible suggestions. This is the one we're going to, going to use. Surface, uh, oh, what did I do then? I, don't really, I didn't really want the help. So, I want to have my function here, g. I want to go through an angle of the parameter n. It's starting already. And uh, I want to use the x-axis as, you now it defaults to the x-axis anyway, but it's a good idea to write that in. And uh, I'll press enter. Now all of this is the representation of a parametric space that would do this surface. We really don't need to worry about that. We just want a pretty picture. And as I change this parameter, it rotates the surface through more and more angles. If I get all the way around to 2 pi, it gives the full rotation. I'll just zoom out slightly so we can see the entire thing. Uh, 
let's just move that up slightly. Oh, now moving it up, if I'm on the XY axis and I do a left click, the arrow changes and I can physically move the entire thing upwards. And I'll have a little bit of a rotate. And there's my, there's my surface of revolution. The original red line, that's our function G. If I don't want that line to be shown, I can just make it uh, go away. And, uh, you know, if I want to see what a cross-section of this thing looks like, I can rotate the view here. So there's a cross-section of my object. Uh, and I uh, can put a nice little picture. Remember, once you're happy with the way the view looks, from the main menu, you can go to File and then Export. Where do I oh, export image? And there's the image which I can either copy to the clipboard or download a local copy. So that's the end of the demo. Uh, go back through it again if you like. Oh, and there's this nice little feature where it'll rotate around for you if you want. Uh, that's just a little bit of fun. So that's it. Uh, hope you have fun making uh, your own objects by revolving a function around the x-axis and uh, of course in class you've learned how to calculate the volume of that object using uh, integration. Okay, thank you. See you next time.